Good afternoon. Um, I'm Peter Winkler. I'm zooming from Hanover, New Hampshire, where I should be doing it. What I should be doing is preparing classes and preparing income taxes. What I'm actually doing is watching many wonderful G4G uh, performances. So what I'd like to do today is tell you uh, about one corner of one of my great interests, which is probability and intuition, and tell you about two paradoxes involving slight bias. Now, what's going on here? Well, um, nothing in this world is exactly perfectly fair, and I'd like to give you two examples where maybe the effect of bias is not as obvious as it seems. The first one is, is a problem I call home field advantage. And we assume that there are two baseball teams, we'll just call them A and B. They're fierce rivals, and every year they play each other in a, a series. Okay. We will say that they're evenly matched, except that each team enjoys a small advantage playing at home. Uh, the number 54% actually comes from professional baseball, where the home team wins about 54% of the time. It doesn't matter, but it's important that it's a small edge. Okay, so they meet every year. The first team to win four games wins the golden teapot. There it is. And the way they do it is that the first three games are always played in Team A's home, and the rest of the games are home games for Team B. And the question is, so here's an example. You start off with three A games, and then maybe some games at the home of Team B. And the question is, which team has the advantage? All right, so a reasonable question to ask is, how many games will actually be played? Well, there could be four, five, six, or seven games. And it's not too hard to figure out what the probabilities are if the games are all 50-50 games. Um, this is what they look like. With probability an eighth goes to four games, a quarter to five, five sixteenths to six games, and five sixteenths to seven games. And by the way, these probabilities are about the same for the, the real world series of baseball. Okay, that gives an average of five and 13 sixteenth games. And that's still about the right answer if we change that 50 to 54% for the home team. And the point is that it's less than six. And therefore, on average, more games are played in the home of Team A than in the home of Team B. So Team A will have the advantage for more than half of the games played on average. And therefore, it must be Team A that has the advantage, right? Well, there's a problem. Now, those of you who've done World Series puzzles know that it, that it, it doesn't usually hurt to think of all seven games being played. I mean, suppose they are all played. That certainly won't change the outcome of the series. But it, since all the games are played and they all count equally, it seems like Team B should have the advantage because four out of seven games are played in Team B's home. So it turns out that this argument is actually correct. Um, but there's something weird going on here. Why should it be that home field advantage in the last game, which is, all, which is usually not played, seems to be just as valuable as home field advantage in the first game, which is always played? Well, therein lies the paradox. And one of the effects of the paradox is the following. Suppose that team A and teams A and B played their series over many, many years. The league statistician will find the following. Team A has won most of the games, and team, A, team B has won most of the series. OK, so I'll let you think about that. And let me show you a second paradox. I call this the heads biased coins. This involves a different A and B, Alice and Bob. Each one has his or her own coin, 
that flips heads with probability 51%, which a heads biased coin. And at a signal, each one begins flipping his or her coin once per minute, betting a dollar each time on the outcome against some bank that has all the money it needs. Okay. So both are betting away. Alice and Bob each begin with a stake of $100. Alice is betting on heads, okay, which is a good idea, because as we know, the coin flips heads with probability 51%. But Bob is determined to bet on tails. <laughs> Suppose they both eventually go broke. Here's the question. Which one is more likely to have gone broke first? One is betting with the odds. One is betting against the odds. They both go broke. Which one is more likely to go broke first? Okay. Well, you have had 10, 10 seconds to think about it. Here's the answer. They are exactly equally likely to have gone broke first. And in fact, for every number of flips, the probability that Alice goes broke exactly on that flip is the same as Bob. I have exactly the same distribution, probability distribution when they go broke, given that they both went broke. Okay. Now, I'll let you prove that. But I want to give you also a variation to consider. Suppose that Alice and Bob are betting on the same coin. Now there's only one biased coin. They repeatedly flip this coin. Alice bets on heads. Bob bets on tails. Peter, we're, we're running. We have run out of time. So if you Let's can close it up. That, in fact, they both go broke eventually. And now we ask the same question. Which one is more likely to have gone broke first? Okay, with that, I thank you for listening.